God shows up. Now, this is how John wrote it. This is how John's trying to wrap his head around this huge God. And he writes, in the beginning was the Word, meaning Jesus, and the Word was with God, meaning Jesus was with God, and the Word was God, meaning Jesus again. And he was he was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and life, the life that was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness cannot and did not overcome it. So Jesus shows up, God shows up in, in, the, in this infant stage of life, Jesus human, God and Jesus being the same person, and God comes to show light, to be light, to be hope, to be peace, to be joy, and to be love to a world that so desperately wants and needs all of these things. Think about your day, think about your week, think about your month, think about what's going on right now, what's inside your head and heart, and I'm not counting the little kids who are waiting because this happens to be the longest worship experience that they've ever had in their entire life. But think about what you had before you got here this morning, or before you got here tonight, and think about everything that you've been thinking about and what you've been experiencing. Whatever that may be, God said, I'm showing up, I want to be with you, and I'm going to take the most normal way of doing it, I'm going to show up in a way that takes my hugeness of who I am and limit myself to the form of human or humanity just so I can identify with them. Just so I can save them. So I can rescue them. John writes, the word meaning Jesus became flesh and made his dwelling among us. So this huge God, this humongous God, this creator God that created all things, and we have life through this creator God, this intelligent designer, we have life through him, and he is the light and the life because he came and showed up and decided and chose relationship with us over separation from us. Wrap your head around that for a minute. This huge God chose flesh so that he could in- initiate a relationship with us through the cross and the resurrection, but by showing up. And his mission was to simply save us so that he, so that God the creator could be in relationship with us, the same ones that he created in the image of himself. So that nothing would ever get in the way of that relationship with us. Or our relationship with God. See, there's this word that I keep on hearing. There's this word that continues to come to mind. That God could have just blown this whole thing up and started over again. God could have easily just started over again, but chose not to because we're created in God's image. And so God was willing to put on flesh that bleeds. Or you can stub your toe in the middle of the night because you can't find your way to the bathroom. Or you get achy knees and back and all that kind of stuff that we have to deal with day in and day out. But also to have to experience the same kind of heartbreak that we experience day in and day out within our lives because of relationships that we have with others. And yet God was willing to not separate himself from any of that experience 
to be with us, to walk with us, to experience what we experience so that we could have life here and now that is filled with hope, that is filled with peace, that is filled with joy, and that is filled with love that is not determined by our circumstances, but our relationship determines our relationship with God determines how we do life. So that's what we celebrate. See, when words are hard to come by, we sing. Or others sing. When words are hard to come by, we, we serve. When words are hard to come by, we have hope. And we, we show hope. We show joy. We show peace. But more than that, when words are hard to come by, when words are difficult to wrap our head around this whole idea of who God is in Jesus, and it sounds so absolutely absurd at times, but what's not absurd is why he came, and why he came is because he wants to be with us and wants to love us. It enables us to love others. That's, that's, that's the crazy part about this whole thing. See, this whole moment that we have here, this relationship that we have with Jesus, it's transformational because it dictates how we do life with other people. And so when we're not in relationship with Jesus who is the ultimate creator and lover of our lives, it's really hard for us to love other people. And to have hope, and to have peace, and to have joy. It's hard for us to forgive. It's hard for us to be in relationship without that. So that's why Jesus came, showed up, so that nothing would ever get in the way of our relationship with him and nothing would ever get in the way of our relationship with others. So in a moment, Stacy's going to come up. She's going to sing. I'm going to light some candles. I do want you to know if you were following the uh, Dallas-Seattle game, the Seahawks did win, by the way which eliminates Dallas Cowboys from the playoffs. And how funny is it that I get more of a reaction out of that than I do when I'm talking about the hope of the world. And that's okay, I get that. I love football just as much as the next guy. So sorry, Dion the only Cowboys fan in this joint right now. But as I light the Christ candle, let's remember that light that shines and the darkness doesn't overcome it. Ever. Ever. So I'm going to ask the ushers, uh, those who have helped, meet Paul in the back, please, and uh, get your candle and come forward at this time so I can light that up. And so that we can um, hold this part of our candle lighting service. Now, friends, a couple words of instruction. A word of instruction, my friends. If your candle is not lit, take your candle and do th go this way into the candle that's lit. The worst part about it is feeling wax hit your hand unexpectedly. It's funny for me. It's not funny for you. It'll be funny for you tomorrow, but it won't be funny for you now. It will actually, I will laugh at you, by the way. <laughs> so ushers, uh, come on down. Uh, come forward at this time so that we can light our candles. And um, as they do that, Stacy.
Staying for uh, Silent Night, Holy Night, as the band leads us. Silent Night, Holy Night, all is
So here's, the, here's my encouragement. Even though in a moment we're going to blow out their candles, and we're going to go home and we're going to try to sleep in anticipation of what will be tomorrow, take the joy, take the hope, take the peace, take the love that is light to a world that doesn't exactly have light in it and be the light out there. Show people who Jesus is by the light that you carry with you. So God, we pray and thank you, God, for this opportunity, chance to be here tonight with you, God. We pray that you would remind us that you go with us, that you are our light, and so that, God, we can be the light out there. Amen and amen.